What's up, y'all? My name is William, and I'm a developer advocate at OneSignal. Today, I have a special video for all your Ruby fans out there. We're going to walk you through sending your first push notification using our Ruby SDK client. Let's get into it. Let's get started walking through this sample script. I'm going to go to my gem file, and you'll see that I've specified the version of the OneSignal gem I want to use in this script. Now, I'm going to use Bundle to install all of my dependencies. You can see here that it installed all of my dependencies and I now have a gem file uh, lock. Next thing is this .m file. There are two variables that we're gonna need to specify. The OneSignal REST API key, which can be found in your app uh, settings on the OneSignal dashboard. And the second piece is the OneSignal app ID, which is the identifier that's returned once you successfully create a OneSignal application. Once you specify those, uh, you can just come into this app and you'll see here that I'm just pulling out my, uh, my environment variables and assigning it to these local variables here in this script. Now, where things get a little more interesting is on line eight, we are configuring OneSignal to use that REST API key uh, right here, lines eight through 10. Next, we need to create the API instance. Uh, another word you can use for this is an API client. They're the same thing, they're synonymous. This is what we're going to use to actually communicate with the OneSignal API. All right, where things get a little bit more interesting is on line 14, we're going to create a notification object. It's important to note that this notification object is it exists in the Ruby context. So we have notification where we're going to say one signal notification dot new, and we're going to pass in the app ID. This is so uh, we know what app ID this notification belongs to in the Ruby context. Next, we're going to specify the contents. You'll see here that I'm just using a string map and notice that I'm also giving it this EN. We need to specify the language of the notification message because we do support multiple languages. Next, on line 18, I need to specify what segments I would like this message to be sent to. Right now, I'm going to uh, submit this message to anyone who subscribed to my application. Now, line 22 is where we actually submit the notification to the API. So I'm going to get my API instance and I'm going to call the create notification method. I'm going to pass in a notification object that I've just created here. This is going to go off and send the HTTP request to our API and from there, the notification message will be sent to my device. In this case, my Apple Watch. Let's go ahead and run this. We see that it was received by two recipients. And that's because I have an Android emulator device that this was sent to, as well as my personal iPhone. 